This one comes from Australia. Thank you very much, uh, Mark Vitnell from Sinusoid Proprietor Limited. I know what this is, and I think we're gonna have... Oh, that didn't... <laughs> Knife totally missed that. Um, I think you'll find this quite interesting. Boom. All right, we have... Ta-da! Rotary encoders. But better than that, Australian made rotary encoders. And I believe we've got one working and one that's already torn down because they're probably not easy to tear down. So we're going to have a look at how rotary encoders work. Awesome. Oh, look at this Bobby Dazzler made in Australia by Sinusoid uh, here in Sydney, by the way, at uh, Taramara. Fantastic. Um, this is the RPE48 for those playing along at home, and it's a rotary position encoder, but uh, this one has an absolute analog output of 4 to 20 milliamps. So it's a, a classic 4 to 20 milliamp uh, process uh, control signal, as they're called. So what this is going to give us is a 4 to 20 milliamp uh, process current output, as it's called, um, and it can give a 12-bit resolution for the entire 360 degrees. So wherever the uh, reference is for uh, 4 milliamps, which is like, say, the zero degree uh, position, uh, so to speak, as you rotate that around, that'll increase up to 20 milliamps, and then that will wrap back to 4 milliamps. So you can actually get the absolute position of this thing with 12-bit uh, accuracy, and uh, this will do it very quickly as well, up to 7,500 RPM. So this is a uh, 3 wire jobby so you've got to provide it a uh, power source but some uh, 4 to 20 milliamp uh, stuff you don't have to. In, in fact there's basically uh, three different types and I'll, I'll try and put up some uh, graphics here if I can find some of uh, the different types of 4 to 20 milliamp uh, process current output uh, devices that you can get. One is that you basically put it in series and it acts as a uh, current source and then you have a load resistor on there with, well in series with it, uh, typically 250 ohms and then that converts it to a voltage and then you can read the, in this particular case, uh, the position of uh, your rotor encoder but it could be any other um, industrial control and this is where 4 to 20 milliamp comes in. Now the other type is uh, what we've got here which is a three wire type so you basically provide a uh, in this particular case, uh, 12 volt to 30 volt uh, DC, and then you get an absolute current output, which uh, then you connect uh, down to ground. And the other type is basically an isolated uh, type where the actual uh, sensor part itself is isolated from the uh, current loop uh, section. So, um, but this particular one, let's take a look at it here and see how this works. Now, why would you have a 4 to 20 milliamp output? Why not have 0 to 20 or 0 to 10 milliamps? Well, this is because uh, you can have very long cable runs. Remember, the 4 to 20 milliamp uh, process current loop standard is its uh, a basic name and this is where uh, you uh, you might have heard of a pro in fact I've done a video I have to link it in of a process calibrator and uh, like it's effectively a multimeter that sort of like specializes in this sort of 4 to 20 milliamp uh, you know generation and also measurement uh, as well but there's a couple of multimeters on the market that have it I'll show you that in a minute so the reason they use 4 to 20 milliamps is uh, so that any interference on the line you want a basically a high High current solution so that if you get any noise coupling into your very long cables in your factory and all your machinery and stuff whilst it's easy to induce a voltage into a cable it's very hard to induce a current and in this particular case it's very hard to induce any milliamps of current that would actually upset uh, this sort of thing so um, that's why they use 4 to 20 milliamps if you go right down to zero then eh, you're gonna come a gutter with like a small little induced currents in your cable um, down near that zero point. So they have 4 to 20 milliamps so that uh, the system knows when it's reading it if it's less than 4 milliamps, uh, let's say typically under like 3.5 milliamps or something, then you know that's an error. Or if it's above uh, 20 milliamps, say 25 milliamps, then you know that's an error as well. So 4 to 20 milliamps has become sort of like the industry standard. In fact, I don't know, is there a standard for this or is it kind of like a de facto standard? Off the top of my head, I don't know. I have to check. 
And another advantage of having uh, 4 milliamps as your absolute uh, minimum is that then you can steal some of that um, current to basically power uh, remote sensors at the end of the line, uh, so to speak, because it's a constant current loop. So if you've got a sensor like embedded in your machine or something like that, you don't want to have to run some extra lines to it. You run a current loop uh, to it. And uh, basically this 4 to 20 milliamps de facto industry standard, um, it basically means 0 to 100% of, in this particular case, a rotation, but it could be anything, some pneumatic actuator or absolutely any other industrial process uh, mechanical thing or electrical thing you can think of um, that will give you, like, that you want to know, like 0 to 100% or you want to control uh, something. It, not only just reading back, but you can actually uh, control stuff um, as well. So yeah, 4 to 20 milliamp current loops are very uh, wide, massively widely used in the industry, so much so that they make dedicated test equipment like those process meters, uh, you know, Fluke make them and many other uh, companies. I've done this like a real El Cheapo uh, one before that I found for next to nothing. It's just a huge de facto standard that uh, lets you run a whole bunch of stuff. Anyway, up uh, very cool. So there's the uh, specs for those uh, playing along at home. It's got um, uh, ball bearings in it. No worries, none of that plastic rubbish. Um, you can get up to 7,500 RPM if you remove uh, the seal, but otherwise uh, 3,000 RPM here. So it's got, and you can get different uh, flange sizes and uh, sampling rate of 10.4K uh, samples uh, per second at uh, 12 bits. And well, let's give it a go. Now, I do believe that this uh, Keysight U1272A is the only meter I have it here in the lab, I think, um, that has a, f a specific 4 to 20 milliamp mode. Now, of course, you don't need a specific multimeter with uh, this uh, 4 to 20 milliamp function or a process uh, meter to actually measure one of these things. You can just use a standard multimeter in current mode and you're going to measure 4 to 20 milliamps. But this is just nice in that it gives you a percentage mode like this. So, you know, we're, we're just basically select in it so we can get our current like that 7.145 milliamps but when you go into the process mode like this it'll actually convert that to a percentage and it gives you the milliamp uh, value up there well i just realized that lead display is really hard to re can you even see that on camera anyway okay so what we've got here is uh three wires uh your 12 volt uh, supply your red and black and the white one is the current output so i've got the current output going into just the current jack of uh the multimeter here and you can see we're supplying uh 12 volts here and we're getting a value out and as i turn the knob we're going to get from zero to a hundred percent and if i'm very very careful you'll see it wrap around there very touchy it'll wrap back to zero but it basically goes from 99 back to a zero so we're reading the rotation of this shaft here from zero to a hundred percent and that gives us four to twenty milliamps and you can see the um, uh, current actually changing for the uh, sensor there's going to be some internal uh, circuitry in here which uh, takes some residual uh, power but, but basically we're going to get that four to twenty milliamps output cool huh because this is basically a constant current well an adjustable constant current generator. Now because this has 12-bit precision in here my fingers my silly human fingers just aren't good enough to Oh, I'm putting the lightest pressure on that. It's absolutely tiny, but it's going to wrap around because it's not absolutely good. Oh, calibrated. Come on, you can do it. There you go. And it jumps around to zero. My uh, clumsy uh, human fingers here aren't good enough to get that 12 bit resolution. But if I put like a huge, massive wheel on here and then I just, eh, eh, tie, you know, just feather touched it, then you'd be able to see the 12 bit resolution uh, available inside this uh, rotary encoder. So, yeah, very cool. Zero to 100% and then you can guarantee that you're almost, it doesn't matter where you put this in your factory, it doesn't matter how much crap and noise there is around it, you're really not going to upset a constant current reading like that. And that's why they use these uh, constant current loops, these process loops as they're called. And this one is the uh, smaller shaft diameter. Now I thought that uh, this might be, these might be uh, difficult to take apart, but they're not. Now it has a very nice cable interface here. Check out the uh, cable interface they got here. This actually screws in like that. And then it's got a uh, like a waterproof tight uh, seal, dust and waterproof uh, seal on the end of that. Looks like we can just open that with three screws and it pops off. And uh, you'll see um, that these are deceptively simple. Well, let's just open this up here and you'll see how this works almost 
I mean, oh, no, 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 oh, it screws off. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Oh, Bobby Dazzler. <laughs> Whoa, there we go. It fell apart. And that's all that's in this thing. Well, by saying that's all, there's actually a lot of tech that goes into it, of course. But at the end of the day, it's pretty simple. All we got is this shaft, and you know, it's going to have a nice ball bearing in there. It's a real Bobby Dazzler. It feels like it. Oh, it's pornographic, really. Um, it's just got a permanent magnet on the end of that, and it just... It just spins, and then, and yep, you guessed it, we've just got a Hall Effect uh, sensor um, chip in the middle of that, and of course, these are, um, you know, amazing tech inside these uh, Hall Effect uh, sensor chips in there. Um, I can't quite make out the number on that. I'll get that, and I'll put up the data sheet right here. And that's an Osram AS5047 um, Hall Effect sensor there and it's actually a 14 bit jobby so this one at uh, 12 bits there are uh, being a bit uh, conservative uh, there it is uh, the actual chip is uh, capable of more than that but uh, yeah that basically gives you an, uh, an SBI output it's got a lot of magic built into that puppy and what else they've got here is a microchip uh, 12 bit DAC there I don't know what that jobby is there but if we flip it over got a little programming port there just inside there you can see that on the other side all the ST fanboys go wild hopefully I can get that uh, that's an ST micro by the looks of it and uh, then they're, 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 this is how they're doing the uh, 4 to 20 milliamp uh, current uh, conversion here. So that's a neat little unit. Of course, all the magic happens in the Osram uh, Hall Effect sensor there. It's got four uh, sensors in there and lots of uh, and ADCs and lots of other magic. And it can sample, you know, up to 10,000 times a second or whatever it uh, was there. And uh, yeah, the micro is just uh, doing all that processing and in uh, real time and then just converting it from uh, to that four milliamp um, standard. So that is very interesting. Thank you very much, uh, Sinusoid, for uh, sending the, this in. I'll link it in uh, down below. Aussie made uh, company selling uh, these really high quality um, rotary encoders. Great stuff.